Hello and welcome. In this video, we are going to talk about measures of dispersion, range and standard deviation. The world is dynamic and variability is inevitable. Therefore, we need to learn methods that help us monitor and measure the degree to which a given data of our interest is varying. Measures of dispersion attempt to quantify the variability or spread of data. These are non-negative, real numbers measured in the same units as that of the data for which it is being measured. The three measures of dispersion that we are going to talk about in our lecture series are range, standard deviation and interquartile range. In this video, we will only cover range and standard deviation. Range. Range of a data set is obtained by subtracting the lowest value from the highest value. Let's say a stock in which we have invested had falling market price per share in last 10 trading sessions. Therefore, we can set it in order and we know the smallest value is 45, the largest value is 62. Therefore, the range, which is a difference of these two values is 17. The disadvantage with range is that it is completely dependent on the extreme values as we did not consider any other value in the data set while calculating the range. Let's take another example. As you can see that roughly all the data points in this example are equal to 9 or 10. But there is one data point which is an outlier, which is more than 2200. Therefore, the range gets influenced and you can see that while all other data points are roughly equal to 9, the range is 2200, which may not be a fair representation. An important takeaway is range is affected by the outliers. Therefore, we need to check our data before choosing range for measuring the spread. Let's talk about standard deviation. Standard deviation is the most popular measure of dispersion. It is denoted by Greek letter sigma. Unlike range, standard deviation takes each data point into account while calculating the dispersion. Lower the value of standard deviation, lower the process variability, that is data points are closer to the mean, whereas higher standard deviation means that the data is more spread out or away from the mean. Let's understand this. So we see a curve here which has a standard deviation of 20. Let's consider increasing this standard deviation. So if we make it 30, then this is how the curve changes in its shape. You can see that now the red line is moving farther away from the center line which is representing the mean. Whereas if we consider reducing the standard deviation, let's say we make it 10, then you can see that these data points are coming closer and hence the curve is closely tied up to the center line. It'll be good to know how standard deviation is arrived at. And to explain this, we'll consider only three data points. Let's say we have a curve which has a mean of mu and there are three data points x1, x2 and x3 which are at a distance of d1, d2 and d3 from the center line which is the mean. Now we can easily calculate d1, d2 and d3 as x1 minus mu, x2 minus mu and x3 minus mu. This is the horizontal distance and they are at the same level. Therefore if we were to look at the total deviation from the center line we can simply add them all up and we'll say it is d1 plus d2 plus d3. But wait a second, we have a problem here. Some of these distances could be negative and adding a negative to a positive might just cancel out the deviation and we'll not be able to see the true picture. Okay, let's say our mean mu is equal to zero. x1 is positive three x3 is negative 5 because it is on to the left of 0. In this case, if we will compute x1 minus mu and x3 minus mu and add them up, you will see that we get a negative of 2, which means that these data points are cancelling out each other's deviation. So to overcome this, what we decided is that we should square all these deviations and add them all up. So this is how we go about it. Now we get d1 square, d2 square and d3 square as x1 minus mu square, x2 minus mu square and x3 minus mu square respectively. Now the total deviation or rather I should say the squared deviation 
is obtained by adding all these up. If you were to look at the average deviation, then this is how we will get it because we have three data points. So we have taken a total of all the deviation divided by the number of data points, simple average. But what we have done now is that we have squared the units compared to the original data. For example, if you are working on the time duration measured in seconds, it is now second square. So to come back to the original units, we take the square root. If we were to generalize this for x1, x2, x3, let's say xi in general, for a given mean mu and n data points, rather than only three data points, then this is what the standard deviation looks like. What we just computed is the standard deviation of a population. If we were to calculate the standard deviation for a sample, we can notice that the formula has following changes. Our sigma gets replaced by s, our mu gets replaced by an x-bar, and n, which was the size of the population, here gets replaced by n minus 1, where n is the sample size and we are subtracting 1 out of it. Now it is not in scope to understand why we take n minus 1 here, that's a separate topic, but for your understanding, it's important to note the difference in the formula. In real world, most of the times we will never be computing standard deviation manually. Therefore, while using softwares, and the most popular of which is Microsoft Excel, you need to notice that there are different formula for different standard deviations. In Excel 2007 or earlier, STDEV and in newer versions, STDEV.S computes sample standard deviation. Whereas STDEVP or STDEV.P in the newer versions computes population standard deviation. In real-world scenario, it is not very common to know the entire population. Hence, using sample formula is a common practice. That covers an introduction to the measures of dispersion. If you like this video, please do not forget to subscribe. Thank you.